Hello everyone. In my today's lesson, I'm going to talk about approach to a child with a proteinuria. The charge and the size selective properties of the glomerular capillary wall prevents significant amounts of albumin, globulin, and other large plasma proteins from entering the urinary space. Smaller proteins, that means low molecular weight proteins, do cross the capillary wall, but are, uh, they are reabsorbed by the proximal tubule. A very small amount of protein that normally appears on the urine is the result of normal tubular secretion. Abnormal amounts of protein may appear in the urine from three possible mechanisms. The first one is glomerular proteinuria, which occurs as a result of disruption of the glomerular capillary wall. The second one is tubular proteinuria. This one uh, it appears uh, when a tubular injury or dysfunction that leads to ineffective reabsorption of uh, mostly low molecular weight proteins occur. The third one is an increased production of plasma proteins. In conditions like multiple myeloma, rhabdomyolysis, or hemolysis, which might cause the production or release of very large amount of protein that are filtered at the glomerulus and overwhelm the absorptive capacity of the proximal tubule, there is increased uh, urinary protein. Uh, there are different ways of measuring urine protein. Uh, urine protein can be measured in random collected sample or in timed or in 24 hour samples. The first one is urine deep stick. Uh, urine deep stick measurement of protein. The total protein concentration in urine can be estimated with chemical impregnated plastic strips that contain a pH sensitive calorimetric indicator that changes color when negatively charged proteins such as albumin bind to it. Deep stick primarily detect albuminuria and the less sensitive for other forms of proteins such as low molecular weight proteins and the gamma globulins. Visual changes in the color of the deep stick are a semi-quantitative measures of urine uh, protein excretion. The deep stick is reported as negative or trace or plus one or plus two or plus three or plus four. Uh, trace is when the uh, protein is from 10 to 29 milligram per deciliter. Plus one is when it is between 30 to 100. Plus two is between 100 to 300. Plus three is from 300 to 1000. And the plus four is where it is greater than 1000 milligram per dl. Uh, false positive results can occur when a very high urine pH, that means uh, when pH is greater than seven, or a highly concentrated urine specimen or contamination of the urine with blood occurs. And the presence of pyuria or prolonged deep stick immersion. Whereas false negative tests results can occur in patients with a low urine pH or dilute urine or a large volume of urine output or in this state in which predominant urine protein is not allowed. So these are uh, when we expect false positive or false negative tests by urine deep stick. So deep stick varies with uh, ur uh, urinary pH and also whether urine is concentrated or diluted and also other things. Positive urine deep stick test for protein is considered to be present if there is more than a trace, that means more than 10 to 29 mg per dl or more than plus 1 in urine sample in which the specific gravity is less than 1.01 .01, or if the specific gravity is greater than 1.015, the deep stick must read greater than or equal to 1 plus. That means should be greater than 30 mg per dl to be considered clinically significant. Because the deep stick reaction offers a qualitative measurement of urinary protein excretion, children must, uh, with persistent proteinuria should have proteinuria quantitated more precisely. The other way of measuring uh, proteinuria is by timed or 24-hour urine collection. This one offers more precise information regarding urine protein excretion than a random performed deep stick tests. Urinary protein excretion in the normal child is less than uh, 150 mg per day or less than 100 mg per meter square per day. In neonates, normal urinary protein excretion is higher because of reduced reabsorption of filtered proteins. A reasonable upper limit of normal protein excretion in healthy children is 150 mg per 24 hour. More specifically, normal protein excretion in children is defined as less than or equal to 4 mg per meter square per hour. And abnormal proteinuria is defined as between 4 to 14 
milligram per meter square per hour. And the nephrotic range for the neurons defined as uh, greater than 40 milligram per meter square per hour. This is based on the body mass index and also per hour. Uh, the other way of measuring urine protein rise, uh, urine protein to creatinine ratio measurement. Urine protein to creatinine ratio measurement of uh, an untimed uh, or spot urine specimen has largely replaced timed collection. In children, urine protein to creatinine ratio have been shown to be significantly correlated with measurements of 24-hour urine protein and are useful to screen for protein urea and to longitudinally monitor urine protein levels. This ratio is calculated by dividing the urine protein concentration in milligram per DL by the urine concentration of creatinine by milligram per DL to provide a simple measure. It should ideally be performed on a first morning voided urine specimen to eliminate the possibility of orthostatic or postular protein urea. A ratio of less than uh, 0.5 in children less than 2 years and less than 0.2 in children greater than 2 years of age suggests normal urinary protein excretion. A ratio greater than 2 suggests nephrotic range protein urea. When we came to clinical considerations, the findings of protein urea in children and adolescents in a single non first morning urine specimen is common. It might occur up to 10, 10 to 50 percent. The prevalence of persistent protein urea on repeated testing is much less common. The challenge is to differentiate the child with protein urea related to renal disease from the otherwise healthy child with transient or other benign forms of protein urea. When protein urea is detected, it is important to determine if it is transient, orthostatic, or fixed. When we say transient protein urea, the majority of children found to have positive tests for protein on urine deep sticks will have negative evaluation on repeated deep sticks and the normal urinary protein if formally uh, quantitated. Approximately 10% of children who undergo random urine analysis have protein urea by single deep stick measurement. Across the school age children, this finding occurs more commonly in adolescents than in younger children. In most cases, serial testing of the patient's urine demonstrates resolution of the abnormality. This phenomena defines transient protein urea and it causes uh, remains elusive. But defined contributing factor for this transient protein urea include fever, exercise, dehydration, cold exposure, heart failure, recent use of epinephrine, seizure or other stress conditions can cause transient protein urea. Transient protein urea, protein urea usually does not exit uh, plus one or plus two deep stick and uh, no evaluation or therapy is needed for children with this benign condition and it resolves spontaneously or as the cause resolve. The second one is uh, orthostatic or postural proteinuria. Orthostatic proteinuria is the most common cause of persistent proteinuria in school -age children and adolescents and it occurs in up to 60% of children with persistent proteinuria. That means if a child has persistent proteinuria, 60% of it is due to orthostatic proteinuria. Children with this condition are usually asymptomatic and the condition is discovered by uh, routine urine analysis. Patients with orthostatic proteinuria excrete normal or minimal increased amount of protein in the supine position. In the upright position, urinary protein excretion might be increased tenfold. It might reach up to 1 gram per 24 hours. But hematuria, hypertension, hypoalbuminemia, edema, and renal dysfunctions are absent. In a child who is persistent asymptomatic proteinuria, the initial evaluation should include an assessment of orthostatic proteinuria. It begins with the collection of first morning urine sample, with subsequent testing of any urinary abnormality by complete urine analysis and the determination of spot urine protein to creatinine ratio. The correct collection of the first morning urine sample is critical. The child must fully impede the bladder before going to bed and then he collect the first voided urine sample immediately upon arising in the morning. The absence of proteinuria, that means deep stick negative or trace for protein or a normal ratio of urine protein to creatinine less than 0 0.2 on the first sample on the first morning urine sample for three consecutive days confirms the diagnosis of orthostatic proteinuria. In, this, in such a child, no further evaluation is necessary, and the patient and the family should be reassured if the, uh, 
the should be reassured of the benign nature of the condition. The cause of orthostatic protein was unknown. Also, altered renal hemodynamics and the partial uh, left renal vein obstruction in the upright uh, lordotic position have been proposed as a possible cause. The third one is fixed protein, uh, fixed protein urea. Children found to have fixed protein urea on the first morning urine sample on three separate occasions should be further investigated. Fixed protein urea is defined as a first morning urine sample that is greater than or equal to 1 plus on deep stick testing with a urine specific gravity of greater than 1.015 or with a urine protein to creatinine ratio of greater than or equal to 0 0.2. Fixed protein urea indicates there is a potential kidney disease caused by either glomerular or tubular disorders. Uh, when we see the glomerular cause of protein urea, the glomerular capillary wall consists of three, three layers. The fenestrated capillary endothelium, the glomerular basement membrane, and the podocyte, with foot process and intercalated slit diaphragm. Glomerular protein, uh, protein urea results from alterations in the permeability of any layers of the glomerular capillary wall to normally filtered proteins and occurs in a variety of renal disease. Glomerular protein urea can range widely from less than 1 gram to greater than 30 gram of protein in a 24 hour period. The, podo the podocyte is a predominant cell of injury in most glomerular disease characterized by heavy protein urea. This is the structure of the uh, glomerular capillary lumen with uh, glomerular basement membrane, endothelium, and also epithelium, and also podocyte with its foot process and slit diaphragm. So alterations in any layer of the glomerular capillary wall predisposes for uh, protein urea. Glomerular protein urea should be suspected in any patient with a first morning urine protein to creatinine ratio greater than one, or significant protein urea of any degree, associated with hypertension, hematuria with active urine sediment, edema, or renal dysfunction. Disorders characterized primarily by protein urea include idiopathic nephrotic syndrome, secondary cause of nephrotic syndrome, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, mesangial proliferative glomerular nephrites, membranous nephropathy, and, and the like. Also, other renal disorders that can include protein urea, such as uh, post-infectious glomerular nephrites, IG nephropathy, and SLE, and also Enoxolin purpura nephrites and also Arport syndrome. Uh, the initial evaluation of a child with uh, fixed protein urea should include the measurement of serum creatinine and an electrolyte panel, first morning uh, urine protein to creatinine ratio, serum albumin level, of course, complement level, ANA, and sometimes uh, renal biopsy is often necessary to establish the diagnosis and the guide therapy. When we see the tubular protein urea, a variety of renal disorders that primarily involves, involves the tubular interstitial compartment of the kidney can cause low-grade fixed protein urea, urine protein to creatinine ratio between 0.2 to 1. If it is more than 1, urine protein to creatinine ratio, it is more of glomerular etiology. But if it is uh, mild or low-grade fix, uh, fixed protein urea between 0.2 to 1, it might be tubular protein urea. In healthy state, Large amount of proteins of low molecular weights than albumin are filtered by the glomerulus and reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Injury to the proximal tubules can result in diminished reabsorptive capacity and the loss of those low molecular weight proteins in the urine. Tubular proteinuria might be seen in acquired and inherited disorder, and it might be associated with other effects of proximal tubular function, such as Fanconi syndrome, which is, uh, which is characterized by glycosuria, phosphateuria bicarbonate wasting and amino acid urea. Tubular protein urea is a consistent finding among patients with X-linked tubular syndrome. Dental disease, which is caused by mutation in the renal chloride channel, can be also one of the tubular disorders that cause protein urea. Asymptomatic patients having persistent protein urea generally have glomerular rather than tubular protein urea. In occult cases, or if we don't, if it is difficult to, to, to differentiate glomerular and tubular protein urea, we can do protein electrophoresis of the uh, urine. In tubular protein urea, little or no albumin is detected. Whereas in glomerular protein urea, the major protein is albumin. In my next lesson, I will talk about nephrotic syndrome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.